so where do we go from there? So like, let, let's talk about Adrian let, Jay's uh, scripted promo. Uh, yeah, that her, cut her. That apparently Mick Foley and a couple other of the WWE superstars mm-hmm. have an uproar about. Um, yeah, uh, AJ Lee's uh, what has been coined on the internet now as the pipe bombshell. Uh, of course, in reference to CM Punk's pipe bomb which uh his his first original one which everyone praises that yeah it was so good it was so good it was so good Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was let's bear in mind everybody these are worked shoots even punk's promo was a worked shoot anyways aj lee's pipe bombshell versus the concept of total divas so what happened here was there was a match between uh it was a a, a rematch from the pay-per-view yes uh nikki bella i think and uh natalia natalia neidhart which fucking at least they're letting natalia wrestle now at least she's not in this gimmick where she's always farting (laughs) fuck that was stupid (laughs) jesus goddamn motherfucking christ like Uh... god what a terrible what a terrible gimmick or storyline or anything to give to one of the only women on your roster that can actually wrestle. Yeah, for sure. Jesus Christ. If you're going to have a farting gimmick, give it to Oksana. She can't fucking wrestle. So give it to Oksana. Why are you wasting one of your best female actual wrestlers on this fart gimmick? I don't fucking get it. Maybe you should ask them. Maybe I should ask them. In any case... So they have that match, and uh, Nikki Bella gets the win, whereas uh, uh, Natalia won on the pay-per-view. But uh, So Bella avenges that loss, and while she's kind of celebrating or whatever, uh, AJ's music hits, and she comes out up onto the ramp. So in the ring, you have Natalia, um, the, Funka, the Fuckadactyls, whatever the hell their names are, Cameron and Naomi. Yeah. Whoever. And this chick in a yellow dress that was announcing for some reason. Yeah. I I'll think know, she, I don't know what the hell. I think she's I think she's one of the NXT girls. I to be perfectly honest, I can't I couldn't tell. Um she could have been from the first front row for all we know. <laughs> hey, you want to announce? Sure. If Justin Robar can do it for TCW, I can too. Um exactly. <laughs> Anywho, there's a spider that's dropping down in front of my laptop screen. Hey, sir. Oh, he's going to crawl away. Fucker. All right. Anyways, um yeah, so A so AJ comes out. They're in the ring and outside the ring there the are the twins. two Bellas and oh, what the hell is that girl's name? Um Eva Marie or Ava Marie? Sounds right. We'll go with it. Something along those lines. Yeah. Uh, an, uh, another one, whatever. So AJ comes out and she starts basically blasting um, the Total Divas, the reality show. Because yeah. if you watch the show, she's not in it, right? Like she's just, she apparently, I guess, wants nothing to do with it. Yeah. So she's in it and uh, she's just like, so basically, I just saw the latest episode, and the Bellas are dealing with their daddy issues, and the Funkadactyls broke up and then got back together and broke up and got back together again, and Natalia's fiance is not much of a man. <laughs> and it's like, okay, this is kind of it, a little catty, but kind of interesting. So yeah. where where is this going? She goes on to talk about how, like, she doesn't need to take time to pay attention to these what she calls interchangeable useless women. And I was like, okay, this is getting a little edgy now. Yeah. I kind of like this. And like all the girls are down in the ring just like, say it in my face. And no, the, the ones and in the, the, the ring weren't saying no, much they of weren't. anything. They what, weren't. What the really Bellas pissed were. me off, the Bellas, wouldn't, would not would shut not up. Would not shut up. Wouldn't, wouldn't give... The promo that she was cutting wouldn't give it w- its own if kind I of was space. There, I would have jumped the barricade and, and just, just been like, like, shut up. Got up, up in their face and just Please. screamed, shut up and let this happen. Exactly. You're because... talking way too much. I got some duct tape out here. Exactly. Fucking shut up or you're going to be wearing it. I keep it for the girls in the parking lot, <laughs> but I'll use it on <laughs> yeah. you because that's what Nick does on the last fan standing podcast. Hey, it's um, even colored. Ooh. Fancy schmancy. <laughs> You're moving up in the world, sir. <laughs> that call center money going into oh, fancy colored duct tape. Oh, yeah. 
It's what the girls like. <laughs> Perfect for girls' mouths. Um, yeah. You so it's just like mouth. you got pretty <laughs> mouth. We're totally off track now. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, <laughs> it happens. Jesus. Any hoodly doodle. Um, we'll see you next week. No. Um, so so AJ's cutting this promo. The Bellas will not shut the fuck up, and it was bad because they were so close to a camera, and that's why their audio was getting picked up. Yeah. If the camera guy would have fucking moved away. Like moved down by the post or something, and just uh, or in any case, they just they wouldn't shut up. They wouldn't let the promo go of its own. But she had like a couple of these lines where, like, it was just it felt it it was what a good worked shoot is supposed to do, which is have a lot of elements of truth to it. And so she was just AJ was just like, I don't need that. I don't need any of that reality TV stuff because I'm not a wannabe actress. I'm here because I'm good. And she's like, I sacrificed for this. I was homeless for this. Fact, she actually was homeless. Well, she was spent she? she spent a short period of time living on other people's couches. Really? Absolutely. Her and her whole family so, like spent time homeless while she was growing up. And she was like, I'm here because I'm good and because I love wrestling. Like you, yeah. you, you are all here because you wanted to make it acting and couldn't do it. You weren't good enough to do it, but I'm here because I am good. Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is getting really good. And she had one line that I absolutely fucking loved. No matter how, and this was AJ speaking to the divas. No matter how many red carpets you want to walk in your four thousand dollar ridiculous heels, you will never be able to lace up my Chuck Taylors. <laughs> and I loved that fucking yes. line because it's like, you know what? Sh- there's no other fucking woman on this roster that comes into the ring wearing Chuck Taylors. <laughs> like you just don't, you just don't see it. And it's and it's so cool because you know that it's part of her personality. Like in her home, in her house, she has a whole cupboard with nothing but Chuck Taylor shoes in it because she loves Chuck Taylor shoes. Right. So it just it felt real. It did. It definitely. It wasn't as much as what some people were. Some people are calling it like, oh, she revitalized the Divas division. And we talked about yeah, this a little earlier. Yeah, we talked about it's this like, when, when we were eating our sub sub down uh, at the local, mm, which is a good bar. The if you're local ever public in Bridgewater, house. Nova Scotia, check out the local bar mm, the lo- right down in the mall. Bridgewater Mall. Hey, hey. I'm telling you, we're giving all these places free advertising. We really need to start charging them for this shit. Um, that will happen. Yeah, that, yeah that'll happen. When pigs fly. <laughs> so, it, yeah, oh, there it goes. Um, so, yeah, people are saying that this is like totally revitalized the Divas division. It's like, I wouldn't go that far yet. No. But it, it laid it's a, a s- groundwork. It's a step in the right direction. Exactly. Now you have to build on what she just did. Yeah. Have her come out and do another promo next week. Or have one of the other girls... Like, have, have Natalia, who wasn't really saying anything, but, like, everybody knows how legit Natalia is. Like, she's a legit shoot wrestler. Like, she's a good friggin' wrestler. But AJ, it, it was a great promo. But, you again, you got to build on it. So take somebody like Natalia, who everybody knows is legit, and have her come out the next week and just be like, I didn't really like what AJ said. Yeah, I'm part of this Total Divas show. That whatever it was an opportunity, so it's an opportunity that I'm taking. But don't think for one second that if I got you in these ropes, I wouldn't stretch you like you've never been stretched before. And just like and, and shoot with it, mm. then you have a really good feud, a feud you can run with for a couple of months. Oh, AJ versus Natalia, and those would be really good matches because AJ, for as small as she is, AJ can go. And Natalia can go. Mm. So put them in the ring together. Or, hey, how about this? Maybe start bringing up some of these actually decent female wrestlers that you have on NXT and fill the Divas division up a little bit. Fill it up with girls that can wrestle. Yeah. And then you still have the Bellas, who you can put on sort of the Divas marquee because everybody knows what their names are. And... Uh, you know, you know. can work with something here. It's just something about WWE and NXT. Mm-hmm. It's just they they don't want to bring up. It doesn't the seem talent. like it. 
for some odd reason. It really doesn't seem like it, does it? No. It almost feels like they use NXT as like they send one guy from the main roster down to NXT every week to be in the main event. And it's just like, mm, I wouldn't do that. No. I don't think I'd be doing it that way. But like the, the only people that they've brought up from the NXT roster that have really made an impact is the Shield yeah. and the Wyatt family. Two good choices. And two great cho- two. Don't get me wrong. Two great fucking choices. Oh, yeah. But you have Chris Hero in the fucking NXT roster. Mm. You have Sami Zayn, who was El Generico, on the friggin' NXT roster. Yeah. Why? Unless you're going to make them your top champion and they have this dominant champion run, you need those guys on your main roster because look who you've got hurt Sheamus is out four months Cena's out four to six months your top talent is hurting yeah you need supplementary talent that can come in here and have great matches until those guys get back and the sort of the marquee power comes back a little bit um because whether we like Sheamus or not Sheamus does draw for some reason I don't get it he, but he works good he works he, he works he works he works all right he works all right for who he is yeah um, and, and Cena, you know, obviously draws. He's the biggest financial draw in the company because of the merchandise for the kids. Whatever. Oh, Rodney Broom is here. Way Rodney! To, way to go, Rodney. We're right, pretty much at the end of the friggin' podcast. Um, You're a little bit late, but yeah, really. what's happening? But, but welcome. Uh, just tuning in. What did I miss? Well, pretty much everything, sir. Um, <laughs> you miss a pop two phone call from uh, two of the people that we mentioned on our first ever podcast. Yeah, our first ever podcast. We told stories about uh, about these guys and some drunken exploits from high school uh, you, uh, and non-drunken exploits from high school. You also missed what you missed. We talked about a little bit about... Uh, Paul Heyman CM Punk matches on the last Raw. Yeah, we talked about yeah we talked about Punk and Heyman. We talked about uh, the Shield. We Shield, talked about the AJ. Uh, the Gauntlet match from last week. We basically just talked about last, last week's Raw. Raw. Yeah. And uh, and of course we talked a little bit about Twin City Wrestling, which we we thought we were going to have an exclusive scoop. It didn't end up being that, no. but uh, because they had to, they had to already fucking. Go and announce it, Cyril. Um, anyways, um, <laughs> and there goes my, there goes any. If I even try to buy a ticket, they're just like, no, <laughs> you go away now, you terrible jerk off. Um, but yes, yeah, so the next TCW show, Lunenburg Community Center. Haha, I got it right this time. Yeah. September twenty eighth. It's a Saturday. rare Saturday show, uh, not a Friday show, but maybe maybe the Friday show is going to be in Dartmouth. Who knows? Or maybe there's just no Friday show. Possibly. That's a possibility as well. Yeah. Tra-la. Tra-la-la. I want to end with a couple of questions for you, sir. What? The first question, uh, I want to lean into this uh, Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow feud for a second. Yes. Because it's a feud I actually like. It is. It is a nice feud. The only thing, though, I do not like when Cody Rhodes gets on the mic. I do like Cody Rhodes on the mic. That's true. He's very good. Although I wish he still had his mustache. Kind of. I, kind I of mean, I, you kind of misunderstood me. I said I, oh. I do not like. Oh, you don't like? No. Oh, sir, I'm, sir, I'm sir. I'm not really fond of Cody Rhodes. Uh, his, his promo say cats. Really? It's too, um, I find him kind of monotone. Monotone? Mono. A little bit. A little bit. He definitely doesn't have the charisma of his father. Let's put it that way. Yeah. He certainly don't. He doesn't have Dusty Rhodes's charisma. He doesn't even really have Gold Dust's charisma wow. um, when he's actually the Gold Dust character. When he's not. When he's just Dustin Rhodes, he's just like kind of. It's kind of whatever. But I think I think Cody Rhodes can cut a decent promo when when he wants to, a- and sometimes he does, and sometimes he doesn't. Um, well, here, Rod- Rodney just said in the chat, Cody Rhodes isn't the best on the mic, but his skill in the ring makes up. True. I can I can True. agree with that for sure. Um, I, I really like, I love that run that he had with the Intercontinental title. Yes. He is the most relevant that the Intercontinental title has been in five years, easily. So I liked, I liked that for sure. 
Um, right now, again, Curtis Axel has the Intercontinental title, which is fine. He's a, yeah, it's a young guy that needed a push, but they got to do something with it. True. Right now, he's just like he's wrestling CM Punk. And, well, CM Punk doesn't have any interest in winning the Intercontinental title, so there's no real point there. Yeah. But in any case, in the future of this feud, the feud between Rhodes and Sandow. Yes. And we've talked about both of these guys at length in different podcasts. Might we see a match eventually, maybe even at Night of Champions, who knows, where Sandow's money in the bank briefcase is on the line? I thought they already did a match where his briefcase was on the line. I didn't think they did. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought they already did that. Uh, guys that uh, guys in the chat, Cody and Rodney, can we confirm uh, whether or not there already has been a match between Rhodes and Sandow for the Money in the Bank briefcase, like one-on-one, where if Cody wins, he wins Sandow's briefcase? Can you confirm or deny that for us? Because we seem to be confused. Because I didn't think they had done that yet, but may- it might be something maybe that they're planning Quite or possibly. something like that. There's a little bit of delay, so next question, please. It's next question, please. So we'll get those guys to confirm or try to confirm or deny that in the uh, in the chat section. The last question that I wanted to pose to you for this podcast, because we're looking at what are we looking at for time? We're looking at oh, we're over an hour already. Look at that. Who is your favorite and least favorite performer in WWE today? Today, right now. And this this is like either a diva Raw, SmackDown, Raw, NXT, Smackdown, Diva doesn't NXT. matter. Well, it doesn't matter because for NXT or all those other B shows. Right. Because I'll watch them anyway. Well there you go. My favorite superstar on WWE main event is <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But um God. It's not easy. It's not easy, and I have to say my most favorite right now, I mean, has to be CM Punk. Right. Yeah, I think I think uh I don't I don't think too many people would uh would argue no. against you. Just at because that. he he's friggin' awesome. Just at what he does. I mean, right. he sells so good. Mm-hmm. It's just like the emotions that can go on right. on his face just just to sell something yeah. like when he was in the ring with Paul Heyman right like handcuffs and he looked up at him just like fucking yeah exactly you about you, it, bet, you make it you count make you it son count. of a bitch yeah, yeah exactly th- that w- that was awesome and really good and so few guys in the company yeah are, are are able to do that okay so you can you run running with CM Punk you rock it with the CM Punk mm-hmm. least favorite Least favorite. And this doesn't even really mean that you hate the guy. It just means that, like, you want to see so much more out of him and you're just not getting it. Yes. I want to say Cena, but that's so obvious. It's not Cena. It's not it's, Cena. It's another one of the liked. Oh, people. I think I. Oh, oh, it's it's a it's a it's a face. It's a fan favorite. Yes. Um. That's not in the. Seamus? That's not around. Seamus? No. That's I, I, that's not around? Yeah, I'll give you one more guess. Okay. Can I get a hint? What what would be what would be good without giving it away obviously? Uh, yeah. Um Can you uh, tell me what his finisher is? Oh the rock. Yes. Oh yes. the rock. I had to pull the thing off my shoulder. You did, and, and throw, throw it, it away. To the crowd. <laughs> the Rock. That makes you know. Sell that makes out sense. Rock. Sell out Rock. You're 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 more militant on this topic than I am. I I I, I understand the criticisms against the Rock. I'm just not as I'm not as intense into them as you are. No, but I mean, and you know, it's not like I don't hate the guy. Right. I like him for what he's done in the past in the ring, mm-hmm. for who he was. Right. But it's just like he's left. Mm-hmm. And he does these things where he comes back, and he does his whole rock concerts and yeah. shit like that. And even when he got the belt, he didn't wrestle for the belt. Right. He didn't challenge people like other people did. Right. Once he was the champion... 
he just had went out he had every night one and did promos. Yeah, he had one match between when he won the belt at the Royal Rumble and when he lost the belt at WrestleMania. Yeah, he had one match for the title, and that was the rematch with CM Punk. Yeah, at I can't remember what pay per view it was, but it was the one between between the two. So he had the one match, the rematch with CM Punk that he won, and then lost the belt to Cena. Mm-hmm. Whereas you see somebody like Cena. For all the criticisms that people can have against John Cena, he wrestles every week, virtually every week. Yeah. You never really, you never have like a span of two to three weeks in a row where you don't see John Cena in a match. So as as much as people can criticize John Cena, you can't say that he wasn't a fighting champion. We'll put it that way. Yeah. And I think that criticism is legitimate. Are you now, sir? All right, I'm going to start with least favorite because okay. I love I love bitching. So uh, it's how I it's how I live. It's how I survive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to start with least favorite, and for me, it's a tie. And I don't dislike either of these guys. I am just so pathetically underwhelmed by both of them, and I know they're capable of better, but they're not pushed to be better, and it doesn't appear to me that they want to be better. Alberto Del Rio and Sheamus. It's a tie. Okay. My my problem with Sheamus is that Sheamus doesn't seem to catch near as much of the criticism that John Cena does mm. for being exactly the same. Because Sheamus has his five moves of doom. If you watch a Sheamus match... One Sheamus match doesn't differ from the other Sheamus match. It's true. So he has his five moves of doom. He has his his clothesline, and he has his um, not not the brogue kick yet because of course that's the finisher. But he has his like axe handle, and he has his uh, he, he just he just does, has the same moves every match, and then finishes it with the bro kick. Now I like the brogue kick. I think the brogue kick is a good finisher. Yeah. But at the same time, there's just no there's no differentiating one Sheamus match from the other. And as I was talking about Sheamus, I just realized this is actually a three way tie. My bad. <laughs> um Alberto Del Rio. People don't care about Alberto Del Rio nearly as much as they should. Because Del Rio has the ability to be the top heel in the company. Right. He could be the top heel in WWE, but he's not pushing himself and creative is not pushing him in that direction. So I I'm I'm bored with Del Rio. Okay. I could honestly I could care less whether Del Rio wins wins or loses the title. Hmm. To be perfectly honest, I'm waiting to see who they put the title on next because I could not care less about Alberto Del Rio right now. I just whatever. It's it's well, to me it's, mean, it's it's just nothing. I know, but Alberto Del Rio, mm-hmm. it isn't I mean, it isn't all about him. I mean, hmm. he's got things to make him relevant like Ricardo Rodriguez. Right. And and that and that can happen. I would I would like to see from this, I would like to see like a Del R- or not Del Rio Rodriguez start to build almost like a Bobby Heenan kind no, of stable we know of people. He can <laughs> wrestle, yes. Oh yeah, no no qualms with his with his wrestling yeah, abilities. So why not why why not build this like feud mm-hmm. to get a match between Alberto Del Rio mm-hmm. and Rodriguez? And I think I think that'll happen because yeah. If, yeah, I, I, eventually I do think that will happen. In the interim, I'm just like I'm, I'm just I'm so bored mm. with Del Rio, and it's just like when they put the title back on him, when they took it off of Ziggler, and it's just like, oh my god, is this really what we're gonna do now? Like, are we going back to Del Rio as champion? Yeah. Which um, as a, as a heel champion mm. when he's not really over as a heel right now, but which I asked case. you at lunch, and- yes. They took the belt off Ziggler, mm-hmm. and now they're not really doing anything with him. Yeah, they're not really doing anything with Ziggler. It's just that... like he's he's done something wrong or something. It feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Maybe he fucked Stephanie or something. Like, <laughs> and they're just like, you can't be our champion anymore. 
And uh, as again, as I was talking about that, my number three was Ryback. But we talked about Ryback last yeah. week. That it's just like he had a chance to be this Goldberg style hammered over champion, and I think that would have been good for him for a short term run. But now instead, he's a schoolyard bully, and nobody gives a fuck. Okay, we have we have confirmation here. Uh, Rodney Broom, by the way, just canceled. Um, just canceled. Uh, just confirmed, rather, that uh, that match hasn't happened yet. The Cody Rhodes, Damian Sandow. Cody won at SummerSlam, but the briefcase wasn't on the line. Okay, so that that I kind of got my information mixed up, but uh, so it is going to happen. That's confirmed. Right. Okay. Uh, well, it it. it I don't know whether that actual match has been confirmed yet, but chances are it's going to happen. I would I would really like to see that as part of the feud. Um, we got a couple of answers, actually, from these guys as well about favorite and least favorite. Before I get into my favorite, like I said, uh, Ryback and Sheamus and Alberto Del Rio are the three guys that I would say right now are my least favorite guys in the company. Um, Rodney Broom agrees with you. CM Punk is his favorite. Um, Brock Lesnar, he lists as his least favorite. I was going to say Brock Lesnar because Which, you know my, yeah, my feeling about I know him. I know your staunch anti Brock Lesnar stance. You have made that no secret, sir. No. Um and those those criticisms I I can get behind uh, a little less now based on the fact that he had a wicked match at SummerSlam. So that has kind of vaulted him up a little bit. Yeah. And it's like, that's that's good to me. Uh, Cody Nodding uh, says, WWE should get rid of Kali. So great Kali. That's true. He's not really doing anything. No. Um, Hornswoggle, again, couldn't uh, couldn't care less. He's not really doing anything. Fucking midget. Um, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> Dangerous. Oh, Nick just farted. Um, hell, I think Fandango is a huge waste. I never even liked him as Johnny Curtis. I don't think anybody liked him as Johnny Curtis. No. I think that's why Fandango is here. Because it's just like nobody gives a fuck about the guy as Johnny Curtis because he didn't they didn't have him do anything. You know what I mean? With Fandango, at least it's kind of funny when he's when he interrupts other people's interviews. Mm. Just with him just with his theme music starts and he just comes out and he just dances. Just during someone else's, just totally at random in somebody else's interview. I actually kind of like that. I think it's kind of funny. So that that I'm okay with. Fandango isn't great. We'll put it that way. Probably why he's feuding with the Miz. Because uh, <laughs> Miz is not running real hot right now either. So kind of makes sense. May give a chance for one of them to raise up anyways. I would have to say my favorite, my favorite in the company right now is also probably a tie, but I think only between two. Aside from CM Punk, because to me, CM Punk is, for me, it would be an obvious answer because he's just, he's mm. he's fucking phenomenal. Um, we're looking at Dolph Ziggler, because I fucking love me some Dolph Ziggler. I think oh. the dude is so talented. Yeah. Like, talented and he takes bumps so exactly. hard. Exactly. Takes, just, just sells like a boss. Um, has a really good finisher, a finisher that can come out of nowhere because mm. the dude is not looking at him. So it's just like a finisher that can come out of absolutely nowhere, which is great. Uh, and Daniel Bryan, because Daniel Bryan is just going so hot right now. And he is such a sympathetic character because he's getting his ass kicked by the shield all the time. And he still just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. So, I, I love what they're doing with Daniel Bryan right now. So right now, today, it would be between Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, Rodney Broom, Cody Nodding, in our chat for our podcast. Do you have anything else you would like to add before we wrap up? Uh, Cody Nodding says, Fandango's gimmick doesn't work for this time frame. It would have worked in the Federation years. Really? That's kind of interesting. Um, so back, like, you know, we're talking mid nineties or whatever, uh, a dancer gimmick like that would have worked better. I don't really think I can argue with that. I think that's probably a legitimate, um, probably a legitimate idea. I think it would, would have worked hmm. more back then. Yeah, I, for sure. I agree with that. It almost feels a little bit more like a WCW angle. 
Doesn't sure. it? Like, it feels like that guy would be, except with fucking Vince Russo's booking in WCW, Fandango would be the world champion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's... We'll, we'll we'll move away from that. So Cody and Rodney, just one more chance for you guys. We're going to go into our outro here. If you guys have anything else that you would like to add, toss it in the chat. We'll get it at the end of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Last Fan Standing. I almost messed it up. Last Fan Standing episode 15, which is awesome. Awesome that we've done 15 episodes talking nothing but wrestling. That to me is very cool. Almost nothing but wrestling. wrestling. We took a phone call. We took two phone calls. Two phone calls, actually. Except one of which which we're going to edit out. Um, We talked about uh, different colored duct tape to use on girls' mouths. We talked about all (laughs) kinds of stuff in this episode aside from wrestling. Of course, one more reminder, Twin City Wrestling, next show, September 28th, Lunenburg Community Center. Stop making fun of me, sir, by the hand movements. Motherfucker. <laughs> um, great. Um, God, I hate you. Um, good luck to... Uh, Jesus, you suck. Uh, a couple of Twin City Wrestling guys who are getting Ring of Honor tryouts this this weekend as we're recording this podcast wesley pipes who we've talked about very briefly on this podcast as well as the tag team of the r and r express rick and rodney owens they're all getting uh ring of honor tryouts this week good luck to those guys we can't wait to you're still doing it (laughs) sir you're still doing it that i do it's true it's not making fun of you Uh, i don't know (laughs) insecurity on the last fan standing podcast (laughs) he just threw a beer bottle cap at me uh let's see a couple more things here from our boys in the chat rodney broom says great show guys cm punk is on such a higher level than most he's been able to elevate the likes of daniel bryan and cody rhodes by blazing the trail 100 percent agree uh cody nodding says i agree with you justin d bry is my favorite right now in wwe but that may just be because i'm a hardcore ring of honor fan that's a possibility he was fucking huge in ring of honor thanks for the awesome show guys thank you guys very much for coming and checking us out on the chat stream we really appreciate that i wish we would have had that exclusive piece of tcw information but apparently cyril went ahead and posted it 45 minutes before we went to air what can you but do? whatever you heard it here i don't know second probably so the next twin city wrestling show make sure you get your tickets there hopefully there'll be a dartmouth show to go along with that as of right now no future dates past the 28th but hopefully we get a good show on the 28th brand new venue which will be exciting yep uh of course uh, TCW's Smart Mark Alley, which we mentioned earlier in the show. Uh, most of us will be at the show, except for Cody, because, I don't know, he just he just won't be there, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll be able to be there, sir, ideally. So, we're going to uh, cut this podcast together, hopefully get this out this evening, and uh, thanks, everybody, for taking the time to take a listen. Episode number 15 yes. of the Last Fan Standing Wrestling Podcast. My name is Justin. My name is Nick. They are Rodney Broom, Cody Nodding, Twin City Wrestling, That's Smart Mark computer. Alley. That is a computer. Shut up. <laughs> you guys are our viewers on That's Ustream. A That's a camera. We love you. We will see you guys next week for No Holds Barred Podcast, episode number, I believe, 22. Possibly. Possibly. We're going to go with 22. We're going to go not, with 22. It's wrong, but you know what? Whatever. That's, we, we all forever reserve the right to be wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for listening. We will see you next week. Later. <laughs>